I miss the food so much. Bacalhau, sardinha assada. The super box is just, I don't know, it's special. <laughs> Tastes like home. <laughs> but my, my parents and brother and sister are in uh, Porto Santo Island. So they're the best part of the country, to be honest. <laughs> I love it here. It's it's been it's been quite an experience. We've been here for a year and a half, maybe, and um, I love it. I lived in London for something like eight years, but London, an amazing city to visit. But to live there, it's pure shit. Uh, Portugal used to be very very difficult, but mainly because of, of mentality. It's, it's like thick ice, you know, you have to be carving and carving and carving and eventually you'll get used to the cold. Unless you are in the know, in the group, in the selected few, then it, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to do anything worthwhile. My work being what it is, which is a lot of human figure, a lot of uh, representational art. Uh, I wasn't that successful in Portugal because in Portugal people are still stuck to the 60s and 70s. They never really left. You know what? Academically, brilliant. You know, in terms of, of um, workshops, painting, sculpture, uh, printing, brilliant. You know, drawing, etc. And I learned most of it there. Conceptually speaking, yeah, Madeira Island was so much better, so much more evolved and, and really looking forward and trying to, you know, like if you want to study art, there's a bunch of books, but there are things that you have no access to and your teachers can be your guides, you know, so we didn't have that in, in Porto University. You know what was the big game changer for all this? Instagram. Instagram came to open up the doors to to both artists and collectors, and people started to have initiative and uh, and to search for themselves and and you know they're being able to 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 uh, respond to clients' expectations, collectors' expectations, etc. And because we don't need the gallery as much as we did before. Now the, the, the whole situation is completely different. Now we are con contacted by galleries. They look at your work and they ask you, look, uh, would you like to exhibit with us? We have this project, really like what you do. So it's more impromptu in a way, but it en ends up working better because I don't have to, to search for galleries like I used to anymore. Now I can actually just work the best uh, as much as I can, produce the best work I can, and uh, I just present it in the best way possible on, on my Instagram uh, page, and eventually things happen. And these last four years have been awesome. 2018, we did. Uh, I did my first show in the U.S. While I was talking with Susan and presenting Bruce Lee shoes. Uh, Nunu got in touch with me and uh, he said, look, uh, I would love to show your work here. Uh, would, would that be possible? Would you like to, to do that? Like, look, I would love to show there, but at the moment I'm already engaged with Cinnabar Gallery. I have another show in Sweden, but that's another series. And um, I have these two that I need to respond because I already said yes and I'm committed to, to do it. But yeah, we, we, we can, you know, further these conversations and see where, where we go. Because Spaço Exibicionista was uh, um, a new place. I never heard of them. So we started a, a relationship. I, I'm, uh, I told Nuno, look, I have uh, leftovers. Leftovers is in the shows that I did. I didn't, I didn't bring that much work. So I still have a lot of work at home. And I've been thinking about showing what happens in my studio for a long, long time. So why don't we do a show where I, I'm able to finally uh, exhibit my, my, all my studies, my sketchbooks, my, um, my preparatory paintings, and maybe a few of the big ones. And he really liked the idea. And, and that was the, the start of the whole thing. So overall, I think I sent over 200 pieces 
to send to uh Passo Exhibicionista. And uh yeah. They're, they're not in the in the um, in the glam artsy fartsy scene. Um that's extremely helpful because they they really try to listen to the artist, understand the project and they try to flow with it. They try to to give us um uh, what we would like to uh, to represent in the show. So the show is called uh, A Minha Maneira. And um, because I wasn't able to, to go there and, and actually distribute and and, and um, set up the show, Nuno and Teresa did it, and they did an amazing job. You know, probably better than I, I would do. They have some really interesting artists in, uh, working with them. Another thing that's really cool is we are just invited to do a show there. So I'm completely open to work with whatever gallery anywhere I can. And that's a, a big plus because it, it gives me enough room to, to make my own decisions. And uh, so I'm not constricted to, to that, uh, which does not happen with the other galleries. And um, I prefer to work like, you know, uh, just without any strings attached and do the show, say what I want to say, have fun. And I want people to have fun with my work as well and just, you know, come over and, and, and enjoy it. I feel that the gallery and artistic environment in Portugal is taking a little bit too serious, if that makes sense. I don't see anyone except for Joana Vasconcelos, for example, no matter if people like her or hate her, uh, she's been doing an amazing job. Uh, she's a very serious artist. She produces some of the best contemporary art that we, we have at the moment. And not only that, but she goes to drink from our own culture, from our own, you know, and I think that that's really, really good. I think that's awesome. And there are not enough people doing that, you know, and we have to give credit when credit is due. Emmanuel Artist on Instagram. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> <laughs>